Welcome to California Adventure. It's me, Lisa. Happy to be on Earth. And it's the beginning of the Food and Wine Festival for 2023. So we're going to go all around and find all the vegan stuff. Uh, spoiler alert, there's a lot this year. Oh my goodness. There's a huge amount of progress from last year. And uh, I'm in front of Paradise Garden Grill right now. And we have taken over this restaurant. Literally, every single item on the menu is vegan now. Basically, we have an all-vegan restaurant in Disneyland for the duration of the Food and Wine Festival, which is March 3rd to April 25th, 2023. Um, so I don't—I really have no words to describe how I felt when I saw this on the foodie guide. I'll link the foodie guide below, um, and also I'll have a blog post below that goes over everything uh, that you see here. So it's like a handy guide when you come to the Food and Wine Festival. But um, there's a lot to go over, and then at the booth, one of the booths, the Avocado Time booth, has a vegan item as well. And we'll go around to all the different booths and there's some drinks and various things we're gonna look at. So um, yeah, let's see what we got. Here we are at Paradise Garden Grill where the entire menu is now vegan. It blows my mind. I can't even believe it. So we've got three uh, items that have the sip and savor size portion, which is the bagolgi fried rice, buffalo mac and cheese, and impossible gyro fries. And they come in the full size or the sip and savor size, the smaller size. And then the torta de chitaquiles only comes in the normal size because it's a sandwich. So um, yeah, you can do, I'll have everything listed in the blog post below, the difference between the prices and everything. Um, and then there is a kid's menu over here. The kid's menu is also entirely vegan. Look, we got kid's quesadilla and kid's mac and cheese and everything has a plant-based menu icon and the dessert there, peach blueberry cobbler. All right, here we are. We got one of everything. I can't believe we took over this whole restaurant. All right, so for the sip and savor size portions, we have these three entrees right here, but these are the smaller versions. So you can also get the bigger versions, which hopefully we'll get soon, but uh, there's a lot of stuff. So we just got the smaller ones right now. This is the bulgogi fried rice and it's got kimchi and it has, um, it should have just egg in there. So plant-based egg, just egg and um, it's got green onions and it's got a, uh, a vegan beef of some kind and kimchi. And then we've got um, the buffalo mac and cheese. So this is a, they don't often do vegan mac and cheese in Disneyland. Actually, it's probably the first time uh, I've seen that vegan mac and cheese in Disneyland. I think Walt Disney World they do a little more. Anyway, so now we've got, uh, it looks like buffalo cauliflower on the top. So that's exciting and like maybe a vegan ranch on top. And then over here you can compare, we have the kids version. So this is the kids mac and cheese and you can see the base is the same, but then on the adult size, or this is the sip and savor size, but the adult version with the buffalo cauliflower on top. So I would imagine this is quite spicy, but then the kids version is gonna be not spicy. Then over here we have the impossible gyro loaded fries. So it looks like we've got waffle fries there and um, some impossible meat. And then uh, it looks like some sort of nacho cheese, like melty cheese and uh, we've got like pickled onions and tomatoes and stuff and there's a slice of pita bread there as well and here we have the kids quesadilla so um, it looks like just basic uh, whole wheat tortilla and then um, some vegan cheese in there so very very simple and small and basic and then over here we have the peach berry cobbler you may have noticed that riverbell terrace over in disneyland has a cobbler a vegan cobbler as a dessert so it looks like they're continuing on uh, with their uh, knowledge of making vegan cobblers now and so we've got one here too and then the this one does not come in a sip and savor size portion um, so it only is available in this large portion but you can imagine um, so since these three are in the sip and savor size portion right now um, if they were in the full size portion then you would get a plate like this and they would be about this size but look at how big this is so this is the torta de chinaquide and if you like starch this is for you i love starch so uh, i think they're like yeah let's do a torta sandwich and then what should we put in it oh i know let's put chilaquiles in there and then uh what should we have aside oh let's see some chips as a side <laughs> anyway it looks like it has it's supposed to have avocado spread and these are green chilaquiles and then um we got i think there's beans in there as well uh so it looks like there's a green sauce there's like a, a bean sauce and also green sauce um, and it looks good. Uh, it sort of reminds me of when they do a bread bowl with uh, mac and cheese inside. It's not vegan, but they do that sometimes where it's like a starch inside a starch. So uh, it's probably going to be delicious. We shall see. All right, so let's try the Impossible Euro fries first. And it has a vegan cheese on there, and it says on the menu that it's a cauliflower based uh, vegan cheese. And then we've got the Impossible ground beef on top and um, we've got all sorts of veggies and uh, cucumbers and uh, and uh, a tzatziki sauce, a vegan tzatziki. So let's just get a bite. See what we got here. Ooh, look at I think this one has everything on it. This waffle fry has basically everything. Representative bite. Oh, it looks beautiful.
Amazing. It's amazing that I'm eating this in Disneyland, right? Like at an all vegan restaurant, you would expect something like this, but Disneyland, here we are. Um, so I took, the, I took my time uh, photographing, so it's not hot anymore, but it would have been hot if I'd eaten it right away. This is a very creamy type cheese. It's like a, it's like a melty nacho cheese. Yeah, the Impossible Beef is great. It's got a lot of dill going on, I think because of these, the tzatziki sauce, and it looks like on these cucumbers, there's a lot of dill, so I'm really tasting a lot of dill as well. Amazing. Yeah, the tzatziki is great. It has, it's definitely like, like eating a gyro, but um, in loaded fries form. That's actually what they had here last Food and Wine Festival one year ago. They had um, a vegan gyro, so it's like they recreated that, they reimagined that into the loaded fries instead of with um, in the bread. So you have the bread here, so it sort of recreates that. So Heather's over here, and she's going to take a bite and tell me what she thinks. I'm not a huge fan of vegan cheese, and it does have very slight vegan cheese taste to it, but not bad. Um, I definitely taste the dill. Um, I like it overall. Yeah, I would order this again. Yeah. Okay, so I think I give it like an 8 out of 10. What about you? 7 out of 10. Okay. Very good, let's do the next one. Let's try, I'm very intrigued with this um, bulgogi kimchi fried rice. So we were talking about, it doesn't actually say impossible on the menu description. So if it were with impossible me, it would say that because there's a partnership between Disney and impossible and um, they would uh, they would definitely put it in. So the thing is, um, you know, bulgogi often goes along with beef, right? That's the flavoring of that bulgogi beef. And so we were thinking maybe this is like the Trader Joe's style bulgogi beef or something, but it's, it, I, I would be surprised if it's impossible because otherwise I would say that. So um, also, if I ordered this at a restaurant that served beef, I would be very suspicious of this right now. And I would like probably ask, but the whole menu is vegan right now. There's no, they're not doing anything with beef right now. So um, uh, it's almost like ordering at a vegan restaurant. You just have to trust them. I can't believe I'm ordering at an all vegan restaurant in Disneyland. Ridiculous. Okay, let's get a bite. I don't want to just try this on its own first. Yeah. If I were uncertain, I would be very suspicious of this. But you have to trust them. It has the plant-based menu icon next to it, and there's nothing else with beef on that menu, right? <laughs> it tastes like it tastes like beef jerky to me. You know like the Beyond beef jerky? Um, or the, you know, Louisville or something. I love kimchi. It's one of my favorite things. I always have it at home. It's like a, I eat kimchi almost every day at home. If you were here for Lunar New Year, this looks similar to what they had at Lunar New Year. It was also a kimchi fried rice, but then um, this one uh, has the vegan beef on top. So this is the other one. The one from Lunar New Year had tofu. Is it spicy? I don't know. Maybe it's the spiciness that comes later, but in that first bite, I don't taste anything spicy. Even the, the kimchi, maybe if you get a bite with a lot of kimchi in it, it must be spice. I feel like a lot of people, if they don't notice, or if they don't know they're doing something vegan, they will just eat this and they think it's real beef. So, try it out on your friends and family. If you can arrange trying that out, and let me know what you think, what they say, because I, I have a hard time, um, I can't like try things out because pe people know if I'm giving them something or encouraging them to eat something that's gonna be vegan, right? But if you have, if you have the occasion to uh, have someone go in blind, see if they think it's real beef. Um, I think it, I, I actually was, someone that gave me their leftovers from a restaurant, they were like, oh yeah, it's vegan. And it ended up being, um, the, they, they were wrong, it was it, it had actual beef. So like six months ago, I accidentally ate a piece of beef and someone told it was vegan. And then I checked later and it wasn't. So I accidentally, so it's like, I do uh, remember, now I have like a fresh memory of what that tastes like. And it, to me, it tastes just like it. So let's see what Heather thinks. Well, yeah. Yeah, beef. But if I'm not ready to try the rice, why don't you try a little piece of the rice? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Heather's allergic to sesame seeds. So if you have any um, allergies, make sure that you let them know because uh, there's all sorts of, it could be sesame oil or, you know, you never know. There is sesame oil in this. I did ask them. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I'm allergic to the protein, not the oil. Oh, okay. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably um, order, like when you order, you could probably ask for no sesame seeds on top if that's the, if that's the case, you know. It's really good. It's really good, yeah. And if it were hot, if we hadn't taken all the time to take pictures, it would be even better. I, I like it just pretty much the same. As, I would give them both 8 out of 10. I would give that an 8. You would okay. give this one a little higher. Yeah, a little bit higher. I like that yeah. one a lot more than this one. Okay. Now let's try the buffalo mac and cheese. Look at this. This might, I will see if this is my favorite, but in general, I love buffalo everything. This is the buffalo mac and cheese. It's topped with roasted buffalo cauliflower, ranch, and a carrot and celery salad. 
take a bite with just the just the mac and cheese first. Wow. So I think what's happening is that the vegan cheese they have here, um, it's it really seems like the same as the vegan cheese on top of the gyro fries. So um, and on the menu description for that, it says that it's cauliflower based cheese, vegan cheese. So I would bet that it's the same uh, homemade uh, or house-made vegan cheese on this because when I took a bite of these this back and cheese I was like oh it's just it's just like the uh, house-made solid bar cheese on the uh, Europe. Okay let's have one more bite just this. Oh it's so good. It's really like thick and creamy and yeah so I, I don't think it's like probably hard or dia or dia, dia or dia however you want to say it. And then um, I don't, th yeah, I don't think it's one of the big brands. I think they're making it. It says cauliflower. So if this is like a house-made cauliflower cheese, it's probably like you know cauliflower and then uh, nutritional yeast, nutrients with a bunch of. I've made some. Let's see, I made like a, a potato-based vegan mac and cheese at home before and stuff. So the various vegetables can serve as like the starch in it, and then um, you, you know, it's all about the nutritional yeast really. And then okay, let's take a bite of the cauliflower buffalo cauliflower with the ranch on top. I love ranch. It's the best. Mm -hmm. I love getting my impossible chicken nuggets and dipping them in Follow Your Heart Ranch and I'm just like, so <laughs> cool. Let's have a bite with uh, with everything together. Oh my goodness, look at that. I can't believe I'm eating this. It's beautiful. Yeah, everything together is, is really good. So it definitely has that characteristic buffalo flavor where it's like hot sauce and vegan butter together. Um, not just like regular hot sauce, but like a savory hot sauce. Um, but I wouldn't call it super spicy, but you know how it is with spice, it's going to be so subjective. But to me, I would still give it like on the spice level out of 10, I would say five. Like it's like halfway spicy. For, but to me, on, for buffalo, I really expect a lot of spice. I, when I see buffalo on a menu, I'm like, okay, I got to bring my A game. It's going to be super spicy. Uh, but it's Disney, it's like Disneyland spicy, where it's like, you know. Uh, but, you know, they didn't put it on the kids' version, so they thought it was too spicy for kids. <laughs> okay, so now Heather's going to try. Like that. To me, it's not spicy at all, but maybe a three or four on yeah. yeah, But I think I got a lot more ranch in there. So. You got, yeah, the ranch cools it down. Try it. Yeah, the ranch really cools it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely the same sauce as in this one, so. Yeah. It's not bad. I'll do six or seven out of ten. Six or seven, yeah. They're so different from each other. So among these three, it's hard to choose because they're they're each very different. They come from different parts of the world, you know. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like this one because I, I love buffalo stuff. It's if I could only when I'm gonna reorder, I think I would reorder. I feel like the euro fries I would reorder first. I think so too. It said no sesame seeds. I picked that one. But yeah, this is my second choice. I think this is. I th yeah, the euro fries are like eight out of ten, and both these two are like a seven out of ten for me. But they're, they're all amazing. But um, but yeah, this is my favorite so far. Um, let's just take a bite of the kids just so we know. Um, I, I imagine it's just the same. But, but just, you know, for sake of being thorough, let's have a bite of this. <laughs> it's actually not bad. And that's, I mean, for me, that's actually a compliment. Yeah. Oh, because like, you're so picky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would actually eat that. I would consider ordering this again, maybe. But yeah, the fact that I will eat it, because sometimes if it's that bad, I won't eat it. So that would, yeah. I would eat it again. So I the guess the cauliflower, yeah. I think the cauliflower really cuts back on the vegan cheese taste. Yeah. So that's a great kids option. Let's, let's go ahead and do the other kids option, the um, kids vegan quesadilla. So I think this is going to be pretty basic. It just, uh, I, I'm not expecting too many surprises here. <laughs> So I mean it's melted. It's definitely melted in there. It's it's cooled off in the meantime, but um, but it was melted at first. I mean it, it's still melted. It's just not hot anymore. Um, what do we think? Now this is not not that cauliflower um, house made bacon cheese. This is probably all your heart, right? What do you think? I think so. Sometimes they use they use so delicious too. It's, it looks like it was shreds to begin with. Yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, vegan mozzarella. I just can't tell what brand it is. Yeah, so it's going to be one of those vegan brands that makes a shredded mozzarella. So I think Follow Your Heart probably does that. So Delicious does that. Uh, 
it probably does that now. Yeah. So it just tastes standard. If it matters to you for like allergy reasons, um, then go ahead and ask. But um, but yes, it's one of those things. The thing is, it could change. Sometimes they have supply issues, and so they're using Follow Your Heart, you know, for a week, and then the next week it could be, um, you know, Daya or something. So I don't want to tell you like, oh, it's. If I ask right now, they're going to tell me what it is. But if you come in a week, it might be a different one. So if it's for allergy reasons, um, I don't want to tell you like which brand it is uh, because you don't have to ask. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to rate this sort of thing since I'm not a kid. But a lot of kids like very simple food. Um, and uh, I'm not the target audience for this, obviously. But for what it's trying to do, I mean, it's hard to give them that. 10 out of 10 for what it's trying to do. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, yeah. Yeah. I like the cheese in that. Yeah, so it's just not... Um, it's, you know, you know your target audience. This is what I can describe to you. All right, let's do the big one now. We've got the torta de chilaquiles. And uh, I have no idea how I'm going to eat this without it going everywhere. Uh, it's one of those where you accept that it's messy. It's like a sloppy joe kind of. Um, here we go. I wonder if I should put it in front No, that would be, that would be worse. I think it would be worse. I know, I was like thinking about it. I was like, no, that, that won't help at all. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to try to just take a bite. Here we go. Well, let's, let's just uh, see what's going on in here. So, oh, you can see the green, yeah. When you go inside, you can see the green sauce better. So it's like an avocado sauce. I think that's what's going on. It's the avocado type sauce. So that bottom layer you can see is, um, it says chorizo beans. So I think that it's like as a spread, you know. All right, it's got cilantro too. So if that's relevant to you, if you hate cilantro, then you could ask to not have it on there. So this uh, sauce you're seeing on top is also a chipotle cream. Here we go. Yeah, that is just as intense as I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I got a bite with a lot of chipotle crema on it, and um, it is got that smoky type of spice. It's like a little spicy, but that smoky way. Um, yeah, and then the, the beans are great. I got a bite with a lot of beans on the bottom. I try to, that's the thing about sandwiches, is uh, the first bite is not always like, uh, you don't get everything in the first bite, you got to make a little progress here. So there's just so much, it's hard to, Describe what's going on here. So the chilaquile is where the beans are like um, that they have, they're covered in a sauce, right? So they're not they're not crispy and they're not really supposed to be crispy. Um, so you can see they're they're soaked in a sauce like chilaquiles always are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's delicious. So if you're in the mood for a ton of starches, this is for you. I really like the sauce, and considering. These have been sitting here for over half an hour. I'm actually <laughs> surprised they're so crunchy. Mm -hmm. They're not soggy. This would be a fantastic dish without the bread. Yeah, I don't think it's, it needs to be a sandwich. It could just be chilaquiles, right? <laughs> anyway, I think it's interesting, and if you like chilaquiles, you might like it. But among all the other things here, I wouldn't say to order this one over the other things. I guess I would give it like five out of 10. Okay, without the bread, I think it would be like an eight out of 10. Yeah. Maybe a nine out of ten, but with the bread, it's like a six for me. Yeah, it's just it's. I think the spreads are great. So the avocado and the beans and stuff. Like, as far as if you're gonna do a chilaquile sandwich, chilaquile torta, like I do think that this is a good execution of that idea. But maybe the idea is an appealing to you. So I don't know. <laughs> it's a little spicy too. It is the it chipotle has more spice. spice. Yeah, it's more I, spice than expected. The chipotle sauce brings a lot of spice, and then also the chorizo beans here. Um, you know, chorizo is typically quite spicy, so it's probably the spiciest out of all these so far. I agree. Yeah. I'd give it like a 7 out of 10 on the spice. Especially if you continue to eat it. We just had a couple bites, but I'm sure it would build as you continue to eat it. All right, last up we have the peach and blueberry cobbler. How exciting. Oh, this one's actually, I can feel it's still warm a little bit from the, from the little uh, aluminum container here, so that's good. Um, I haven't had the one at River Bell Terrace yet, so it's, I can't compare it, uh, but we'll see how this is on its own merits. You can see we've got lots of peaches in there, and we'll talk about equal blueberries and peaches, big pieces of peaches. It's actually crunchier on the top than I thought. It, um, oh, it's like cereal on the top. It's like a like a crunchy, sugary cereal on top. I don't I don't think that often, so I'm not really sure. What but it's supposed to be like crumbs, like bread crumbs, or or like usually it's like a crumble, like, like a sweet crumble, sweet crumble, flour, butter, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, I still seldom eat cobbler that I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to be expecting, but that's in the bite with peach. So there is some, some liquid on the bottom, I'm not sure if it separates, or is that supposed to be like that in the cobbler? Or? Yeah, it's supposed to be a little runny, but it just depends. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a 
good for sure. Well, one more bite with the crispy topping and the blueberries. Mm. Yeah, I think the topping is really what makes it. But otherwise, it's just like the stewed uh, berries and the peaches. It's really good. Yeah, it's amazing that we have a quick service vegan dessert because those are pretty hard to come by. That uh, most of the vegan desserts, uh, most of the vegan desserts like that are in the park at all have come out within the last six months. And they're almost all at table service restaurants. So if you want to get an amazing vegan dessert, then you go to a table service restaurant. But now we've got a quick service one too. So hopefully these all do well. So Food and Wine Festival will be over on April 25th. So obviously this menu is going to change. But the more that we uh, all come and get these items and the more that we show demand for them and make them popular, the more we will continue to have vegan stuff. And it's just going to transform the park. I really hope this is a trajectory that continues um, and we don't like go backwards at all. And to make sure we don't go backwards, we got to come and show them that these can sell well. So please, come and order everything on the menu at Paradise Garden Grill. Okay, now Heather's going to try the cobbler. It's not bad. I do like it. The peaches definitely need to be chopped up smaller. Yeah. They're really hard to eat. But beyond that, it's really good. A little runny, but it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I give it like a, I think a 7 out of 10 again. What do you think? Same. 7 out of 10. Yeah. Here we are at the Avocado Time booth, and they have a brand new item for this year. It's the Impossible Alpha Star Taco, and it has the plant-based menu icon right there. Very small, but it's there. So we've got Impossible Pork, which is a brand new item from Impossible. Just to note that the one above it is also with Impossible, but it has um, actual dairy cheese, so it doesn't have the plant-based menu icon, and it says Cheddar Max, so that one is just vegetarian. It um, is not vegan at all. So don't order the Impossible Nacho Mac and Cheese. Order the Impossible Alpha Star Taco. And it looks like we've got a drink here as well. That drink looks uh, vegan to me. All right, so now we have the Impossible Al Pastor Taco from the Avocado Time booth. And it looks like a flour tortilla to me. Sometimes you can't tell, like, like the white corn, um, but it looks like it's probably good. When I take a bite, I'll probably be able to tell. Um, and then we've got uh, Impossible Al Pastor with Im the Impossible Pork, which is a relatively new item from Impossible. And then um, it has pineapple and onions and an uh, avocado tomatillo sauce. So uh, it looks pretty good. It's um, probably going to be like sweet and spicy. That's how Alpha Store usually is, right? It's a pretty, it's, it's a good sized taco. It's like a little bit bigger than a standard uh, street sized taco. It's like a, like a medium sized taco. Yeah. So yeah, it is actually quite sweet. Um, it's sweet because of the pineapple on top, but also the whatever marinade is in that with the impossible pork. Maybe the impossible pork is, is so you know different from what I'm used to with the impossible ground beef that uh, it just tastes really different, you know. Um, and the avocado sauce is really great as well. It's a, it's really interesting. Like it's it has a more like sweet tangy, but with alpha store it's always kind of sweet and tangy. But I don't know, it's it's a little bit different than I was expecting. It's good. Yeah, it's just super pineapple -y. So I'm going to take a bite of just the Alpha Store. Yeah, it's delicious. I mean, I'll totally get it again. Uh, it's it's fun and it's like a nice snack size. Yeah, if it, if this were the only vegan option here at the Food and Wine Festival, I would be, this would be like par for the course, right? But the fact that we got this and everything else at Paradise Garden Grill, it's just so phenomenal. I just I have to pinch myself. Am I dreaming, right? So uh, it's just amazing. All right, so as I'm eating this, it's definitely a flour tortilla that we're dealing with here. It's super good. I'm definitely a fan of this one. So it's so hard to say with all the different things that I had today. Man, I've never had to think about this many choices. But um, I think out of all the things, I would say that the gyro fries, the impossible gyro fries over at Paradise Garden Grill would take the top position for me. But um, I would recommend all the other ones as well. At this booth, there's not too much interesting going on. Um, you see that... The drinks, uh, that one in the middle, Chipotle Pineapple Bourbon Sour has honey in it, and then um, that cocktail, Smoked Cherry Mescaliki Cocktail, um, that one looks vegan to me. Uh, but I don't drink so, just uh, if, you, if you have it and uh, you can give me a review, that would be interesting to me. But yeah, that, this drink right here looks vegan. So here we have the California Craft Brews booth, and um, it's not a very interesting booth. It just has one food item that isn't vegan, obviously. Um, but then they've got some beers. So beers are almost always vegan, um, except for like milk stouts or various situations like that. You can go on Barnivore and look up any of these if you are so inclined. All right, this is the Peppers Caliente booth, and they don't have any interesting vegan food, no vegan food. Uh, but there is one drink, the Cantarita Style Paloma, 
and um, it's alcoholic. So if it doesn't say non-alcoholic, then usually these drinks are alcoholic, right? Um, and it says over there um, the components, which is it's a tequila-based drink with a uh, pineapple juice and habanero. So habanero infused pineapple juice. And um, so uh, my friend Riley, who I ran into, actually got this. So you'll hear her review right now. So Riley just had a sip of this, and you can tell me what you think. Um, it's kind of like a spicy Dole Whip. You can definitely taste the pineapple, the tahini on there. Um, definitely super pineapple-y, but it's super delicious. How strong is it? Um, it's pretty strong. Like, I can taste the tequila for sure, yeah. Okay. Now we're at the Garlic Kiss booth, and nothing interesting in the food department, but, um, yeah, we've got a couple of drinks. Raspberry limoncello aid, so looks vegan to me, just a bunch of fruit and herby things. And then guave lychee mule also looks vegan to me. So a couple of drinks, let me know if you try any of these. Now I've got the Golden Dreams booth and it has um, a couple of snacks that are not at all vegan. But then we have a drink, Central California Cooler. So it's just like a non-alcoholic mix of juices and stuff. So yeah, as I walk around today and get all the stuff that they have today, make sure to also check the blog post below because that will be the full guide and I might not be getting every single detail today. I'm just getting what I can for the moment. And then um, make sure you check the blog post because that's um, all details that I'll update as I go along. Across from the waterfall over here in DCA, so the water's not on right now, but the bear, and normally there's a waterfall right there. Across from there, there's this little secret area that they sometimes open up for various reasons. And uh, right now, they have two booths in here. The Delish booth is in here, and then the Berry Patch booth is in here. And um, I don't think either of these have anything too exciting. So for this one, um, Sake Melon 75. Actually, I think this from last year. I seem to remember this one, Sake Melon 75. So um, yeah, it has Prosecco in it, uh, which would, you know, depending on brand, but it's, it's probably vegan. And then, um, then we have this other one, Apricot Tequila Colada. And so the coconut cream that they use in all the different bars here is, is just pure coconut cream, no dairy involved. Um, yeah, so those drinks look vegan to me. Let me know if you try them. And then over here we have Berry Patch, which I think looks similar to last year. Uh, just, you know, nothing, uh, just those th blueberry desserts, which have dairy. But then uh, we've got this cold brew. I think that the thing about this is that you, the oat milk makes you think, oh, it's going to be non-dairy. But then it also says sweet cream, blueberry sweet cream. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's going to have dairy anyway. So um, I would not suggest spending too much time here. So right outside of that little alcove area is uh, what I assume is going to be the Sip and Savory Pass vending area, or there's a little booth that's not open yet, it's a soft opening. Uh, March 3rd, starting on March 3rd is when this will be open for real, but I don't see any booth that uh, is selling Sip and Savory Passes yet today. So um, in the blog post below, I'll uh, you know, look up the prices of the Sip and Savor Pass for this year. It always changes, and it depends on whether you have a magic key discount or whether you don't change the price. And uh, this is the first year that I think it might be uh, useful or might make mathematical sense to get a Sip and Savor Pass. So I, I would have got one today if they had um, been out. But um, I'll put all the information in the blog post below. You can run the numbers, but certainly if you are sharing it with a person, you could. It's for the first year, you're able to use it up on all vegan stuff, and it is a whole new world we're living in, a whole new world of vegan items at Disneyland. I'm so, I'm so impressed. I don't know if I'm ever going to get over it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I really hope they sell well so that we continue to move in this direction and not go backwards. Please don't let us go backwards. <laughs> Gotta go forwards. <laughs> So next to the Monsters Inc. attraction here, we have I Love Artichokes and LA Style. So uh, let's look first at I Love Artichokes. So um, in the past, uh, this artichoke toast uh, was vegan without the cream cheese, but then it's like not very much left after you. Uh, but I, and I also, they are very reluctant uh, to modify things and like won't modify things a lot of times, especially at these festivals. Um, because things are like batch made off-site and then brought in. So um, anyway, and I also don't think it would be worth it. Uh, yeah. So um, also we have this passion fruit rum cocktail. It looks vegan to me. Might be good. And then let's come over to the LA style booth. This one I checked on last year. So this one item with impossible meat in it, um, I checked on it last year and it looks like exactly the same. 
Impossible Euro inspired, inspired naan, but the thing is it has a tzatziki that has dairy in it. Um, and then the last year the bread I think also wasn't vegan, but anyway, it's, um, you couldn't really modify it and it's got dairy in it. So I wouldn't um, suggest getting that uh, because there's, I don't think there's any way to make it vegan. Um, and if they had changed it since last year, like if they had made it a vegan tzatziki and a, and a vegan naan bread, then they would have put the plant-based menu icon with it. And since it doesn't have the icon, then um, I'm sure it has dairy, you know. So anyway, I just want to save you the time of trying to figure that out with the LA style booth. So just there, they just make some items with Impossible that are only vegetarian and not vegan. And that's that's what this is here. Um, but then we have this Echo Park cooler, non-alcoholic, and it has the salon and raspberry rose tea, raspberry puree. It, it looks actually really delicious. It's like all of the, the rose and like, it looks, actually, if I get a drink, I'm not going to get one today, but if I were to get any drink at the Food and Wine Festival, this one looks probably the most delicious to me. All right, so that's going to do it for now. If you come to the Food and Wine Festival this year, please tag me in your pictures and video on Instagram so that we can continue to spread the word and hopefully these items will do well. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content about vegan out from Disneyland. And if you haven't already, please find me on Instagram. And until next time, I'll see you real soon.